Hello and welcome to the Urban Elements Studio. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about loading a quilt onto the quilt frame. Now I have a Bernina Q24, but the basics of loading a quilt are pretty much the same on any type of system. They all have the uh, take up bar, the dead bar, the bar for the backing fabric and for the top. Some uh, quilts also have a rail underneath that hold the batting in place. I don't have that, um, so I cut my batting and attach it um, as I go. This particular quilt is a really large quilt. It's going to be a king size. In the past I've shown how to load a smaller quilt and that has probably a little bit fewer issues and is a little easier to handle. So I thought I would go with the harder option which is a much larger quilt backing. The particular quilt that this goes to is 106 by 106. No, I'm sorry, it's 102. And normal quilt backing is somewhere around 106 or 108. But you can see how large this backing is. It's going to be a king size. So uh, I'm going to do it the old fashioned way, which is uh, what I'm comfortable doing. And that is, I'm going to pin the top to the leaders and um, I guess it's just like music or hairstyles sometimes in life you just get comfortable with something that makes you feel at home uh, you're at peace with it with the process and you just kind of stop there and that's what you stick with the rest of your life that's why you see women with beehive hairdos still or uh, men with pompadour or, uh, people listening to 80s music when it's 2020 um, but I'm going to use pins I will say that the other two most common ways of attaching a quilt to the leaders are with the red snappers and with the zippers I've seen videos on both um, they don't necessarily appeal to me personally uh, and so if that's something that you're interested in, those are obviously things that you could look up uh, specifically from the manufacturer of those items. I, uh, I find it really important. Um, I took a lot of time to center my leaders. So I want the backing fabric center to be perfectly on the center of my leader. The same at the bottom of the backing fabric. And it will be the same when I get to the top as well. So that was really important to me, and um, I just like the basic package of pens, and you're right to the process, uh, and I'm just comfortable doing it. So let's get started. I'm gonna pull the camera in a little bit closer, uh, just like that. Boy, you guys are quick. Moved right back here with me. Um, I have the uh, whole quilt just draped over the back, draped over the whole top but that's obviously not how we're going to load it. One of the first things I like to do, uh, even before I get the quilt uh, onto the frame, is to make a couple marks on the, bad, the backing. And they're kind of faint, so I'm going to move the camera in so you can see that. While I was upstairs and had the uh, fabric on the ironing board and I gave it a little bit of iron, I marked from the top edge of the backing on the back side of the fabric a line that's two inches away from the edge of the fabric. I also made a clear center marking so I know where the center of this top is. I also did a center marking at the bottom but there was no need for me to do a line because this is just to align up my batting and my uh, quilt top once I get this loaded on the frame. And I like to do this two inches. The purpose of it is so when I'm pinning to my leader that any little ripples or uh, puckers are away from where I'm going to be stitching. Also there's no needles or pins from me attaching where the head of the machine is going to sew. I never want my machine to sew anywhere near pins because that's just an accident waiting to happen. 
if you sew over your ruler or your pins what you could have is uh, a situation where you break the ruler you break the needle but also you mess up the timing on the machine and in my case I would have to take the head of the machine off the frame I have to unassemble a part of the frame to do that and then I have to take my machine into service which is about an hour drive and I have to leave the machine then I don't have a machine for a couple weeks so this is a, a nice way to get the flat piece of fabric for my batting and top to go on and it also keeps the head of my machine away from sewing on pins, needles, red snappers, zippers, whatever the case may be. So uh, what I'm going to do is pull down my leader and you can see that I have you can see that I have a red line here on the dotted line to clearly indicate where the center is because there's multiple dotted lines on this and if I was in a hurry I could inadvertently attach the center to one of these off marks which would clearly cause a distortion as the quilt was being uh, rolled forward on the uh, frame. So I'm going to uh, make sure that this is going underneath the dead bar which it has to do and then I can start pinning this from the back of the machine. I'm standing comfortably I just want to line up my center marking on the backing with the center mark of my leader and I'm going to head and start pinning that. Now I am standing comfortably behind the machine and I can roll out as much of the take up leader as I need. Uh, what I'm going to do is just match up my center point, my center line of the leader with the center line on my quilt backing making sure that the pretty side is facing down because that's the way we want it for the finished product and after I get this lined up I'm just going to use these fairly large corsage pens I got mine from Amazon but I'm sure you could get them at your local store uh, your local quilting store one of the things I'm going to say is that's important when I'm doing my pens from the center mark the pins are going to face out this way from this center mark I'm going to have my pins facing that way and that way when I am straightening out the quilt as I roll it up I'm not getting poked by the pins I'm going in the direction that my hand would normally sweep and I know people say oh it takes so long to pin a quilt uh, using pins and you know I've measured it it only takes a few minutes you don't have to do them back to back to back you can have some space in between the pins we're just making sure that it's securely fastened I also want to make sure that my pins are always at the same distance from the edge so I'm trying to stay really just like a quarter of an inch away from the edge and I would be much further along if I wasn't talking and trying to think at the same time but this goes very quickly. Pens are inexpensive, they're easily replaceable, and I just like doing it. Um, and again, I make sure that I get the center of my backing perfectly in line with the center of the leader so that when I go in both directions are going to be nice and straight when I get it finished. So from here on out, from this center out, I'm going to be pinning in the opposite direction. My pins are going to be facing this way instead of the other way. I just want to make sure that I'm not stretching the backing fabric. Uh, I'm just letting it lay perfectly flat against the leader. and I'm going to go ahead and continue pinning. This is a king size quilt so it's going to take a minute but I'm not worried about that how much time it takes I just really want to get it on flat straight and I want to make sure that the edge of the backing fabric always stays perfectly in line with the edge of the leader. So I'm going to carry on with that. I have my quilt backing pinned to my uh, take up le leave uh, leader uh, I'm 
use the center line and my center marking on the backing to align those. And now I'm just going to go ahead and start rolling this up. What I want is for that two inches of excess fabric to be close to the edge of the dead bar when I'm finished. And I can just keep going ahead and straightening this out making sure it's nice and flat and when I get that just about where I need it to be I can go ahead and just clamp up my top fabric get those uh, the leaders snapped into place so that I know it's not going to come unraveled and now I'm going to go ahead and go to the front of the machine and I'm going to do the bottom of the backing fabric the same way. Here at the front of the frame, my leader is clearly labeled back. This is the leader that I'm going to attach the back to. This is where the bottom of the back gets attached. So I'm going ahead and release that so that it can move freely. And I'm going to go ahead and center up the mark on the uh, backing fabric with the center alignment on my take up leader and I'm going to go ahead and start pinning that. If you can see here I have a small marking with a, a pen where the center of my backing fabric is and I'm going to make sure that when I start pinning that I'm lining up that center mark right on the center mark of my leader. That way when I roll this quilt there's no distortion of it being uh, at a weird angle and then it would uh, twist the backing as I go. I don't want to be twisting the backing or the batting or the top so that when it comes off of the frame that it has a weird distortion to it. So that's why I take such care to use the pens and to mark exactly on the center. So I'm going to go ahead and start pinning this again from the center line out in that direction with the sharp points and in this direction out with the pins on that direction. So when I smooth out this as I roll it, I'm not stabbing myself with the pins. When I'm finished pinning the backing bottom to my back take up leader, what I'm gonna end up with is what looks like a big canopy of the backing fabric draped between the two leaders. And I like to make sure that my leader is wrapped really tight so in this case, I've gone ahead and opened it up all the way so that I can really get a nice tight wrap on this as I'm rolling up the uh, bottom. And I always tighten the bottom one first. Uh, if there's an issue with it being really off, um, I know that I've learned from Jamie Wall and what he does is uh, roll the backing back and forth up onto the take-up lever and then back onto the bottom leader and back and forth until it gets nice and flat. Um, I have never tried it that way. Generally what I do is just uh, smooth it a little bit in the center. I know some people don't like that. But once I get to the point where my leader itself is completely wrapped up, I'll go ahead and put clamps on the leader section just to keep that from kind of unspooling. And then I'm going to go ahead and start rolling up. I like to look inside this little canopy of fabric as I'm rolling to make sure that there isn't a pin in there, uh, there isn't a piece of black thread. Uh, in my case, I work a lot with silk dupioni and I end up with these long strands of silk filaments and I want to make sure that I don't end up with any of those in between the backing and the backing. Backing and the batting. And so I can keep smoothing this out without worrying about getting punctured by pins because I put the pins going in the direction that I would be smoothing the fabric. And really, regardless of which method you've used, if you've used red snappers or zippers, 
you're still going to have to roll up the uh, fabric, the backing onto your uh, backing bar. So this part is the same. Again, I'm looking in here just to make sure that it's nice and smooth and even. I'm keeping my edges so that they're rolling up nicely on top of themselves. That helps me keep an eye on how the backing is rolling up. And we see that we've got it fairly well smooth. And I can go ahead and lock up the uh, ratchet on the side to keep this from slipping. This one's still loose, but I can go ahead and lock it up as well now. And I'll show you where the uh, top of my fabric lines up. This is the center mark on both of my leaders and you may not be able to see it from your position but right here is the center marking on the backing of my quilt and I have the uh, ink mark here that's two inches away from the edge that's where I'm going to line up my batting so that I have a little extra at the top just for the attachment and I don't have to worry about not being able to see pens because the batting is blocking my view or the top I have a good two inch clearance to protect the value of my machine from damage and I have a center mark that I could center the batting on and later my top on to make sure that it's perfectly centered as well. But you can see there's very, very little puckering. The backing is attached smoothly to the top leader and to the bottom leader and so the next step is going to be uh, cutting my batting and getting its center mark on. One thing that I wanted to talk about with the size of the batting is, it, well, exactly what size you'd want to cut that. I've already uh, measured my quilt backing. And in fact, I didn't cut any off of the width of this at all because I'm gonna really need all of it. Uh, one of the things to consider is what size batting what I cut for this and I really like my batting to come all the way out to the edge of the backing fabric. The reason is because when you're rolling up a quilt on the take up lever and there's batting in a section but no batting on the edges, the edges are going to become very loose like lettuce leaves because there's nothing keeping them as tight as the center of the quilt the center of the quilt keeps having that batting roll up and leaves this edge slack. And sometimes that slackness on the edges creates an issue for creating good tension on the sides of the quilt. And we kind of want good tension on all four sides to make sure that we're uh, not getting any pleats or puckers in the final product. A lot of times when you have it too loose, you'll quilt something and then find that the back has pleated underneath itself because it wasn't quite tight enough. So I like my batting to go all the way to the edge of the backing, not just stop where the top is. One thing you can do if you don't have enough batting is <clears throat> in, if somebody gives you something to quilt and they haven't given you enough, is to keep some batting scraps like this and you'll lay these on the edge as you're rolling up the quilt and that helps take up the slack from where the batting was absent. It's also a good trick, you know, I have some single pieces, some double pieces, and some triple pieces. And it's also a good trick for uh, creating a little bit of tightness just where there's some uh, little excess in the piecing process of the quilt. So these batting scraps are good to keep on hand, but I'm going to go ahead and cut my batting I'm going to try and cut it the width of the backing fabric and we'll go ahead and get the center mark done and get that loaded on the quilt. Quilt batting is notoriously hard to cut accurately. 
Uh, it's dimensional, puffy. Uh, the thicker it is, uh, I think it's even harder to get a very accurate cut on it. Um, it also is a little wrinkly. Uh, you can't really iron it flat well. Um, I don't even like to iron batting because I'm always afraid there's something in there, little polymers or something that are melt. But uh, especially if you don't know the content of the batting if somebody gives it to you. In this case, this quilt backing is 109 inches. So I needed to cut my batting approximately 109 inches wide. The package said that the batting was 120 inches wide, which I never trust them exactly because even for them, it doesn't get cut accurately. I've seen back batting that is six inches over the size that they say it is. So I always like to measure it when I open it or take it off of the roll. And in this case, rather than trying to measure 110 inches, I measured it and found that it was 120 inches. So I just cut a 10 inch swath off rather than trying to measure it to 110 inches and then get the measurement. I just took my measurement from the edge to 10 inches. And I'm going to save this long piece. Again, if I get a batting that is much smaller than the backing, I can use this as I roll up the quilt to keep those two side edges of the backing taunt so that I don't have uh, lettuce leaves on the side. So I already have this marked with my center marking. I'm going to go ahead and get this into position and then I'm going to show you how I based that with the machine. I know we're looking at a lot of white here but what I have is marked the center of my batting. I've lined that up with my center marking on the quilt back. And also, if you remember, I made a line across the top of my backing fabric two inches from the edge. And I've lined up the very edge of this batting on that two inch mark all the way to the edge, making sure it's perfectly straight. Now what I'm going to do is bring my machine over and again I just have the batting and the back loaded on the machine at this point and I don't even have this batting opened up all the way. I don't want the weight of it pulling on the uh, machine or the batting, backing as I sew. I want it to have a good uh, stabilized position here. I also uh, sometimes will even spray a little bit of 505 just on the back side of the top edge of the batting just to make sure that it's nice and smooth and flat all the way across before I even get to this next section. <coughs> I'm trying this again now that I've put uh, actual bobbin thread in the bobbin. Uh, while I was at it, I went ahead and changed to the blue, which is what I'm going to be using when I actually quilt this. Um, I'm going to change the functions on my machine to a basting stitch. I have the back of my hopping foot right along the edge of the batting, which means that my needle position will be a quarter of an edge, a quarter of an inch away from that. And that's where I'm going to use that as a guide as I sew across the top of the quilt. So I've already pulled my thread up and done a couple stitches. So I'm just going to run this basting stitch along the top of the machine, uh, trying to create a fairly straight line across the top. I don't need to smooth the batting too much because, as I said, I used a little bit of 505 temporary spray adhesive, which is helping to keep that in place. Now I'm just going to go back to my start position. So I'm back at my center line. Now I'm going to go across the other direction. Ooh, and I have a little bit of a wave there. What I'm going to do is use
I'm going to tie off. I tied off uh, with a knot function there. And I want to get rid of these little threads here. I'm always surprised at how a little uncut thread can cause a problem by getting caught in stitching. Uh, if I don't clip, I know that it's going to cause me a problem sooner or later. I also don't need that thread showing through anything. But I have a uh, basting stitch gone across both sides. I could have just gone one and ended, but I double did it when I came back to center. But now I feel like I can unfurl the rest of the batting and get it back behind the bar for the top. A quilt this size I definitely would not float myself. Um, I, I, I would not. I know a lot of people like to float a quilt top. Um, but I want to make sure that everything is under tension evenly as I go. Now I can go ahead and fluff the batting out into position. But I do want to be very careful because batting is very stretchy. And if you grab it in between your fingertips and pull it, um, it's not a, unlikely that you would get a, a tear or a thin mark in the batting there. So I really want to just use the flat of my hand uh, to smooth out any little wrinkles or puckers. After I get the batting perfectly positioned underneath the machine and out of the way, then I can go ahead and bring my quilt top into uh, position, again marking the center with a pin and aligning that against the center mark of my backing and the leader, but also using as a guideline the quarter inch seam line, that I, the basting stitch, that's where I'm gonna put my top up against that line. So there's like a little quarter inch of batting that extends beyond the top of the quilt, just to make sure that I have batting completely underneath every portion of the quilt. Uh, sometimes if you're not careful, the batting can slip down a little bit, a uh, quarter of an inch or three eighths, and then you have nothing inside the very edge of your quilt. Um, usually we do trim the quilts down and that may not always be an issue, but I like to have at least this quarter of an inch buffer at the top just to make sure that I have everything filled the way it should be. So I'm going to go ahead and get the quilt top and get that into position and then we'll base that as well. I have my quilt top laying on top of the batting and the backing. The batting has been already pre-basted with a basting stitch across the top. I have, I'm taking my pin out now after I have the alignment that I want with the center of the top, the center of the batting, the center of the backing on the center of the leader. So I know that the quilt is fairly well centered on the frame. And this particular quilt is called Winding Ways. I'm now going to baste the top the same way I did the batting, starting at the center and working out. And after I get that done, I'm also going to come down both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and um, start basting that, and I'll show you what I do with the sides. I have basted all the way across the top of the quilt top and now I have this edge here that I want to make sure that that is nice and uh, flat also. So after I get the quilt smoothed out, I'm going to go ahead and continue by basting function down the edge of this quilt, basting right on the very edge. And the reason that I like to do that is because I certainly don't want to have pins on the edge of this quilt. If I had pins this close to the edge, then when I was sewing, I could inadvertently hit one of those pins and uh, break the needle and possibly knock the machine out of alignment. So I've gone ahead and gone as far as I can go. So I'm going to go ahead and pull my thread back up, my bobbin thread, and cut that. And while we're over here, I just want to point something out. This space, well this whole quilt is going to be done with ruler work. So the space between the needle and the edge 
of the ruler foot table is six and a quarter inches. So that means I need six and a quarter inches beyond the edge of the top to be able to go all the way to the edge without hitting whatever I'm using to hold the edge of the quilt in place with. Now I have a 109 inch fabric and this still isn't enough. So I know when I get to the edge of the border that I'm gonna to have to be very careful about how I quilt because I don't wanna run into my clip with the edge of the machine, which would cause a jerk in the motion of the quilting. But this is why we ask for additional backing and batting on the edges because otherwise you can't connect the quilt to the frame properly. Uh, this is as close as we can get. I mean, we wouldn't want to have pieced this and you can see I don't have much further I could go. But um, this is why with the ruler table in place, which is absolutely essential when doing ruler work, and this is not the kind of ruler we would be using. We would be using an acrylic uh, long arm quilting ruler similar to this, that's not the design I'm going to be using, but this is thick enough that the hopping foot won't hop over top of it and, and uh, we would stitch over the ruler. So I'm going to go ahead and baste the opposite edge and then uh, we would talk about either floating or pinning the bottom. One additional point, why did I worry about basting the edge? Well, it's very easy reason. One is to keep even tension on the quilt once I have the side clamps on. <clears throat> but also, it prevents a potential uh, issue. If you do not have the edge basted down in some fashion, the hopping foot could sew off of the top of the quilt and then come back and get caught underneath the edge which would sew it down in the middle of the hopping foot and then you have an issue where you've got stitching in the middle of the hopping foot and you can't move the machine out of the way. It's very hard to get the seam ripper or scissors in place once you do that to uh, seam rip the stitches so you can free the machine. What you would end up with is a hole in the edge of the quilt, if not a big tear, and it's a real problem to try and get out of once you've created it. So you want the edge basted down so it's not possible for that hopping foot to get back underneath the edge of the quilt. That's a big issue you don't want to mess with. So that's why I basted the top and the sides. Now, if I was going to float this quilt top, this is how it would look as I'm ready to sew. The whole quilt drapes down onto the floor in a puddle, and you would just smooth the quilt out as you go. I have the top and the sides basted, and I might base the edges as I go uh, advancing through the quilt as I've quilted it. This is called floating a quilt top. I'm not going to give you really pros and cons either way. This is just showing you what that means. Um, I have done both. I personally would not do a large quilt this way by floating the top. I would want a little bit more tension on the quilt. But when I'm doing wall hangings and lap quilts, sometimes it's a, an easy way. It saves a few steps and you don't usually have too many issues. I'm going to go ahead and attach the bottom of the top of this quilt to the top take up lever and that just helps me get equal tension on all four sides of the quilt as it's being quilted and me personally when I'm quilting something this size I just want that added insurance that everything is taken care of. So I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, top take up lever pulled up and start uh, pin basting my quilt top to the take up leader. I just did a really large accordion pleat of putting the top folded on top of itself here up on the top 
and this is my uh, take up leader for the top of the quilt. In the case of the Bernina frame, this uh, rolls up into position this way and allows you to uh, advance or roll out the quilt. But also in doing so, this allows you access to the bobbin case when uh, you're working and you need to reload a bobbin. So I could get underneath here without that being in the way. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and line up the center of my quilt top with the center line here. And again, I'm going to pin with the points facing out in each direction until I get it attached all the way. And then I can go ahead and roll that up and get it ready to start quilting. This is not floating the quilt top. You can see that the bottom edge of the top has been connected to the leader and it's been rolled up on the frame so I can create uh, tension on the quilt by tightening the ratchet on this bar. So that are the two ways of doing it, either floating the quilt top or actually connecting it to uh, the fourth uh, rail on the frame. And believe me, I can hear people on both sides of this argument defending their choice. But in this case, I agree with Ellie Sincavitz. She always used to write in her books when she'd autograph them, your way is the best way. And I believe what she meant by that is you do you. You do what works for you. And I actually do both depending on the size of the quilt. And um, I'm not here to tell you which way to do it. I'm just showing you that those are the uh, two options. One of the last things I do just before I get ready to quilt, um, after I make sure, and I always run my hand across everything, make sure there's no pins on top, there's nothing in between the layers. But then I'll also go ahead and uh, put a little bit of tension on the sides and I'll show you how I do that. The Bernina frame came with uh, clamps for attaching to the side of the machine. Uh, the Bernina clamps I thought were a little too heavy. I didn't really care for them so I cut mine off and I bought these paint tarp uh, clamps. And you can get these in different styles. Home Depot or Lowe's, Sherwin-Williams, Amazon all have paint uh, tarp clips similar to this. And what I like to do, uh, just to give the clamp uh, something for the teeth to hold on to, I will just put two pins side by side, just about in line with the, where the clamp is coming out. And it doesn't really matter to me if that's on the batting or off. But that just gives the teeth something to grip onto. Now, I have other types of uh, two-part system. Uh, that I've been given that you could put this underneath the back and this goes over top snaps into place to give it more even tension but sometimes I have a hard time keeping these on the quilt as I am quilting and it also they work better or worse depending on how thick your batting is so again I have just found this old school method of attaching these where I have the pins I'll just tighten those up and then I can tighten up these little knobs at the side to give me the amount of tension that I want. I will say if I'm not quilting anymore, if I'm done quilting for the day, I release the tension on the quilt so that uh, I'm not really stretching the fabric, the memory of the fabric over a long period of time. And the other thing I will tell you is that oftentimes, even today, I have no intention of quilting on this quilt today. I have the luxury of coming back tomorrow or the day after to start quilting on this and so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, release the tension a little bit and let this be done for the day. If you're running a quilt business you obviously don't have really the luxury of doing that. Uh, you load a quilt, you quilt it, you get it off and you go on to the next one. Uh, but this is basically all of the steps that I can think of at the moment we're getting a quilt loaded onto a quilt frame and generally it's uh, pretty much the same for any system.
as I have already said, this is pretty much all the basic steps on getting the quilt loaded for uh, the quilting process. On just about any quilting frame, you're going to find it's more or less the same. Now, whether you use pins, red snappers, or zippers, those are all investments that you can decide on. Um, I've watched videos on uh, the snappers and the uh, zippers. They are an additional investment on top of the machine, and I'm not opposed to that if I feel like it advances my cause, but I'm very comfortable with the pins. Um, it was one less learning curve for me to deal with, and I can get a really nice flat, tight quilt with the pins, so I'm happy with that. Um, I do like to do ruler work. I love to do pantos and free motion quilt. So those are all things that are optional uh, to learn later. But this particular quilt belongs to a friend of mine and she specifically wanted ruler work, a specific design. So that's how this is going to be set up. But I want to thank you for joining us today and I want to thank Urban Elements for the opportunity to present these free videos. And we look forward to seeing you in video number three which, hmm, I don't know, it'll be something else in the progress of uh, the quilting steps in our one-on-one uh, long arm process. So thank you for joining us today and we'll see you next time.